she would have never forgiven me. Uh, last time I was here, um, I did a really X-rated routine, like really X-rated routine. And the time before, I did like a sort of an R-rated routine. And it, after the show last time, um, a guy came up to me out right outside the door as I was finishing my joint. And he walked up with his 13-year-old daughter and proceeded to tell me that he didn't appreciate what I had done in my show. I'm going to come back to that guy, um, mostly because I want to wait to see if he shows up, because I can't do the second joke if he shows up. But he had a point. He had a point. I'm supposed to be versatile as a comic, right? So I can write some PG shit. It's a new year. We're trying new things. PG-13. We'll go with PG-13, because I said shit already. Uh, so here's some brand new stuff for you guys. <sighs> All right. First and foremost, I'm an insomniac. I've been an insomniac for 20-something years now. Um, on a good night, I get about four hours of sleep. I mean, that is an amazing night. I wake up feeling refreshed the next day in four hours. Most nights, it's like two hours. And the problem is all this comedy and, and music stuff and, and great stuff other people have done on stage gets in my brain, and I'm up thinking about it and... Also, I smoke like three joints when I'm trying to go to sleep, and my brain doesn't want to sleep when I'm high, because who wants to sleep when they're high? So it stays up and it thinks about stupid shit. And because of that, I hope you brought some crime scene tape, because I'm about to murder this stage tonight. That's right. That's right. But being an insomniac, first and foremost, means, technically, I've been woke for 25 years. I was woke before it was cool. I'm so fucking woke, I fall asleep at work, all right? I have perspective. Um, but I am trying to be a better person because of my wokenness, because I woke up. I don't know exactly how you use that in the plural. But uh, so, you know, I got really into recycling. Um, I've been a recycler for a long time, but I got like to the point where I actually take the caps off now and take the labels off and do all the stuff you're supposed to do. Um, but I got like way too into recycling, so into it that I stopped sleeping with virgins. Um, because <laughs> recycle, reuse, renew, right? Um, plus, you can't sleep with virgins all the time. It's uh, a non-sustainable resource, if you didn't know that. <laughs> it's not sustainable. So uh, I went through couples counseling at one point. My first wife, I love saying my first wife, that just tells you how much of a failure my life is. My first wife, <laughs> counseling worked apparently. How about this, my first ex-wife, that's a better way of saying it, all right, all right, that's sad. Uh, so I go to couples counseling, I really am trying to work it out, and they say that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed to go and you can share your feelings and everybody can be heard in a way you normally can't be heard in a relationship. So I go and I'm like really open-minded and I like prepare all this shit in my mind that I've been wanting to say forever. You know, the stuff that it's like you can't really say, right? So I've, I got notes and shit and I've been practicing and I get to counseling and it's an hour of this guy asking me why I do all these behaviors that my first ex-wife apparently called him ahead of time and discussed with him. <laughs> because he's already got a list of shit to talk like it hasn't started the session hasn't started and I'm supposed to believe it's one-sided right so as it's going on and on it's like well do you think it's your relationship with your father that makes you not want a baby and not want to give her happiness uh, because that's it seems like what would make her happy and you do love your wife don't you I mean you said you did when you got up in front of all those people I mean, if at that time your wife had told you that I'm not going to get married to you until you give me two babies, you probably would have said yes because you loved your wife, right? I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, she's sitting right there. Like, what are you going to say? I'm like, well, yeah, of course, I'd, of course I'd give her two babies, right? This motherfucker actually says to me, well, don't you at least love her half as much now as you did then? In the open counseling session. So I go home, it's obviously a failure. I'm thinking about it all night, I'm fucking pissed. I didn't get to say anything. It's just like an hour of me getting berated. And so I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking about it, and finally it dawns on me like the whole fucking conspiracy behind couples counseling is whoever fucking signs the check 
is the non-guilty party. The therapist is not going to attack the person who's paying the bill, right? So this comes to me in the middle of the night. So you know what I did? The next fucking week, I snuck in a day early and I paid that check under my name. Next session went very, very differently. The next session, I'm sitting there with my list, right? I've got my list, my list of things. Before I can even start on my list, this guy says to my first ex-wife, what about your personality do you think it is that makes you so needy that you have to create a new person who is indentured with being affiliated with you for their whole entire life? Why is it you can't get your own happiness outside of creating a brand new miserable human that's gonna come into this world with a fucking mother that's a bitter cunt. He didn't actually say that part. That was just me, I'm sorry, I'm projecting. He didn't really say that part. Moral of the story is pay the check if you go to counseling. Part of the reason I was in counseling is that uh, my uh, first ex-wife, I'm collecting the whole set. My first ex-wife, she said, I smoke too much pot. And she was not wrong. No, she's not wrong. I do smoke too much. It's like not sustainable from a budgetary standpoint about how much we, she was right. Like it's not, not necessarily a moral thing. She's like, you know, you're coughing up blood. It's a problem and you should probably stop. And I'm like, no, that's not from the weed. It's from the cocaine. I told you that. And I quit yesterday. So, um, you know, one day sober. Um, but she was kind of right. Like I went over to my friend's house and this is how I realized she was right. I go over to my friend's house who I used to buy weed from back before the dispensary days, right? That's right, when weed actually cost good prices and, and you know, well, no, now it's like, you know, $800 a gram for some shit somebody stepped on before it went to the dispensary and it comes to you in nugs that are this fucking tiny and you can't even roll a joint without using 50 of them. But if you like that kind of weed, that's okay. Uh, but I was going to buy old school weed nugs that were the size of this microphone. Colas, I wanted a bag of colas, right? So I go to this guy, he's been my weed dealer for years. I can outsmoke this guy, that's the number one sign that you have a problem when you can outsmoke your weed dealer. When your weed dealer fucking taps out, you have an issue. Well, I used to go over there and he'd al he would always roll these big old joints, so we're smoking, we're smoking, he taps out. Finally, he's like, oh, I gotta go do some shit, whatever the fuck it was in the next room, you know, weed dealers are so busy. You know, I imagine he had to go count some money or some shit. So he leaves, and it's like halfway through this giant fucking joint, like Autumn said. It's like the size of an arm or a leg. So I'm halfway through it, like Autumn was, before she left. Oh, didn't tell you that part of the story, did she? That's right. That's how she knows about physics. <laughs> Experimentation. Theorems were proved. Uh, so I'm ripped. This guy is not in the room. There's some stupid shit on TV. There's some fucking rap music, which there's always some shit rap music at every weed dealer's house. I don't know why. It's like the shit that they won't even put on Pandora. They put at your weed dealer's house, you know? So this dude's dog walks in the room and his dog has these huge eyes. It's a boxer, a beautiful boxer, just fucking, just like in the prime of its life, just muscular ripped boxer. Walks into the room just all like boxer-like. You know, they're kind of like, Right? And he stops and he's staring at me with this intense fucking eye contact, like these beautiful giant fucking dog eyes, intense eye contact, and I'm fucking really high. So I'm like, here, right? Because he's staring at me. The dog takes a couple of hits. This dog is the wrong fucking dog to smoke weed with. This fucking dog had some anger, all right? So it started off normal and, you know, we get high and we're talking about other times we got high and shit and this dog's like, you know what really pisses me off, man? You know what really pisses me off? Fucking cats, and I'll tell you why cats piss me off. You know why fucking cats piss me off? Because of cat privilege. And I'm like, oh fuck, what did I get into, right? I'm smoking with this guy. He's triggered, right? This fucking dog, his, maybe his name was Trigger, I don't know. So the dog is like, yeah, you don't fucking see it. Like it's obvious to dogs, but you fucking people don't see it. You're so busy off in your people world not understanding the oppression of dogs. Let me give you an example, he says. He says, is there a cat park where you can take your cats to walk them around? No, you know why? Because your cat can run fucking free. It's not confined to the house all day while you work. Your cat doesn't shit 
outside. It shits inside in the warm, even gas heat in a fucking box while I'm out in the goddamn rain and spinning in circles trying to find a single spot I haven't shit in already. Okay, that's number one. You ever seen a cat on a fucking leash? No. No, you haven't. You ever seen a sign on the outside of a restaurant that said, service cats okay? No. Because the only way a dog can come in the restaurant is if it's indentured to your service. And you don't see the hypocrisy of that. You don't fucking understand how uneven it is. Cats can fucking go out all night. They can fight other cats. No humans get in the middle of that shit. No cat is ever out shitting on his front yard and his human comes out embarrassing the shit out of him with a little fucking collection bag to take his poop away. You still don't see the equality? He says. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's like it's different. Cats and dogs are different. He goes, really? Let me ask you one fucking final thing. How many police officers have shot a family cat this year? Checkmate. So the dog leaves the room and I'm fucking dead silent. Like the fucking joint goes out because my mind is blown. Dog walks out of the room. The fucking pot dealer comes back into the room and he sees me sitting there and he's like, dude, what's up with you? Like, what the fuck? You look like you saw a ghost. I was like, dude, I got high as fuck, and your dog told me this whole bullshit about cat dog equality and fucking just blowing my mind and shit. And he's like, I don't have a fucking dog. And that's when I was like, I'll take two ounces of that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, guys, straight guys specifically, have you ever been temporarily gay? Have you ever turned temporarily gay? It happens. If you don't think it happens, it's a real fucking thing. One time he was gay. That's true. Well, I hope, it, I hope it's true. Are you lying to the audience? Are you pandering to us right now? Okay, two times he was gay. He says two. Maybe more. Two and a half times he was gay. Well, it's easy to become temporarily gay. Like you can, you know, a lot of guys become temporarily gay and they don't even know it. Like a great example of this is football, okay? Because have you ever seen any scenario where two other straight men drink and talk about the arms and the legs and the muscles on their favorite player. We really want to draft him. Have you seen his arms? Fuck. That's not gay. That's like one step away from gay. That's that half a gay point that you earned earlier is basically what that is. But there's other incidents. It's not just fucking that. Like Game of Thrones. You guys watch Game of Thrones? Well, if you don't watch Game of Thrones, ladies, have you ever seen Jason Momoa? You ever seen that fucking guy? I was gay for like 48 hours the first time after I saw him. He's beautiful as shit. I was like coordinating my fucking outfits and shit. I was ready to go to the pride parade, like with just a sign of him hoping he'd show up. It was amazing. It really was. So the moral of the story behind being temporarily gay when you're a straight man is that unless you follow through with it, it's kind of pointless, really. I mean, you can't say like you were at the the end zone of the gay line and you didn't like at least dip a toe over the line, right? So I wrote Jason Momoa a letter confessing my love and I included the same photo I sent to Autumn and it turns out he hasn't called me back either, so. <laughs> so, I have two more, two more minutes? Two more? Okay, thank you. You might lay it already. By four minutes. All right, I want to leave you with one, one last quick thing. Um, my friend decided to have a baby. A um, couple that I know decided to have a baby mostly because she was pregnant. So they didn't really have a, a big choice. But they showed me the photo after the baby is born. And I just, I like, I have a hard time when people are like, isn't my baby cute? Like, don't lead with that. Just show me a picture. And I can be like, oh, he's cute. But when you say, isn't my baby cute, you're offering me a judgment on your baby. And the problem I have with judging human babies is if you really fucking think about it deep down, every animal in the entire animal kingdom, with the exception of the naked mole rat, a hairless baby bird, and possibly mice, every baby in the entire human kingdom is way cuter than any fucking human baby you've ever seen. So I'm sorry, but we only outrank naked mice. So the next time somebody hands you a photo of their baby, show them a puppy picture and go, 
Beat that bitch. Keep it going for Maddie J, everybody.